In this video, I will show you how you can replace a sky by clicking one button. Yes, you heard me right, by clicking one button. And this video is sponsored by Skyland Luminar, which is the software that we're gonna use and their new artificial intelligence sky replacement methods are freaking insane. I couldn't believe my eyes when I tested out them for the first time and how accurate they were. So as I said, this video is sponsored, so there are affiliate links down below. If you do get interested in purchasing Luminar, I make a small cut if you decide to do that. So you're supporting me as a creator as well if you decide to purchase Luminar. All right, so it's Julius back with a new video after a really long time and most of the subscribers here on YouTube know me from Instagram which is my main social media platform I post all of my art and updates there all the time and also a lot of my followers there know that I'm not the biggest fan of Lightroom. I've never actually used Lightroom and I create all of my work in Photoshop. I started as a digital artist in 2017 and since then I've been extremely fortunate to be able to travel around the world, take images and use those images then to create my own art. And Photoshop has and will always still remain my main editing tool. And a big part of my work has always been sky replacements. Actually, I think I changed the sky to around 90, 95% of my images. It's that big of a part that I've decided to build a course that is mainly focused on replacing skies in Photoshop in every single imaginable situation. And that will be available within a few weeks. And before I actually tested Luminar, I had heard some things about it here and there, but when the team at Luminar contacted me and asked if I wanna test out their program, I of course answered yes. I went on their website and I got interested immediately because I saw that in Luminar 4, they came up with their artificial intelligence sky replacements. And I just thought to myself that it's way too good to be true. But immediately when I tried it, my Myself, I was blown away by the results and the way how I use Luminar myself is as a plugin so it works as a standalone program but also as a plugin in both Photoshop and Lightroom so we're first gonna start in Photoshop and then move into Luminar I'm gonna explain my workflow currently with Luminar so the first thing I've done here in Photoshop is that I created a 4000 by 5000 pixel file it is the 4 by 5 crop that Instagram supports so I usually create a lot of my images in this aspect ratio so I'm gonna start off by bringing an image image here and a bit of a backstory of this image is that we were in Iceland for about one and a half weeks and didn't see the sun even once we didn't see the sun even once so all of my images have quite boring clouds in them I'm not saying that for example this image here would actually require a sky replacement but when I was taking this shot, I was thinking more of like, oh, I wish we could have the Northern Lights here. I wish we could have clear night skies, but we didn't. So we're now gonna edit this image in Photoshop and Luminar to achieve a realistic Northern Light result. And I'm first gonna reset all of my settings here and uh, show you what I usually do to prepare my images for Luminar. So I first come here to the lens corrections. I enable my profile corrections and remove any chromatic aberration. I then come to the detail. I add around 30 luminance, this time maybe 20 is enough because we shot this at 100 ISO. I'm gonna increase my sharpness a bit and then I'm gonna jump here to the basic and here what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna increase the shadows. I'm gonna decrease the highlights and I also think beforehand I change the sky what kind of a sky do I want to put here? I want to put a northern light sky so it makes sense to turn or foreground slightly more towards the tint of the northern lights which is more green so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring my tint more to the left side but this effect now looks still way too blue so you can counter that by increasing the temperature from here now our image looks slightly more green i think it's a bit too saturated still so i'm gonna desaturate it from here and also this works both in photoshop and luminar when you create a bigger difference between the sky and the foreground you are gonna get more accurate results especially here because this is a long exposure image the horizon line that we have here is more or less soft so i'm gonna grab a graduated filter bring it here to the horizon level i'm gonna reset the settings from here and i'm gonna increase the exposure I'm going to add a bit of clarity, add a bit of texture. That just helps to differentiate the horizon line. I'm then gonna add a bit of highlights there, maybe decrease the contrast slightly to just have a bigger difference between the horizon and the sky. Then I could come here to the radial filter, maybe add a radial filter here to the ice block. This beach is called Diamond Beach in Iceland. It's really, really cool. I'm gonna increase the clarity increase the exposure a bit and that's now enough for us to prepare our image for luminar 
So now that we have opened our image here, I'm gonna hit enter. And what this does, it opens it as a smart object here in our project. This is really important because now when I double click on this smart object, we're gonna get back to camera raw and we can adjust our settings however we want. So before you actually jump into Luminar, just make sure that your layer is set to smart object. And if you keep it as a smart object, you're also able to go back to the Luminar settings. Otherwise, you're just gonna get the filter here. And if you wanna adjust anything back, you need to start all over. And in Luminar, they have some skies there in the program itself already, but I don't really like using them. I like using my own skies. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare my sky as well. And as of now, when you use a sky in Luminar, it has to be in JPEG. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag my sky here. This is a Northern Light image that I took in uh, Norway. I'm quickly going to reset the settings here and show you how I edit my Northern Light images. So I come to the lens corrections, enable them, remove chroma grid operation. I come to the detail. I increase my luminance to around 30. I increase my sharpening to 60. We're going really fast here because I want to get quickly to the sky replacement part. I'm then gonna add a bit of dehazing. I'm gonna add a bit of clarity. I'm gonna make my northern lights a bit colder from the temperature and then decrease my saturation. I'm gonna hit okay. And all I have to do here now is position this sky to the point where I want it to be. I'm gonna select a point here. I think somewhere there is fine. I'm gonna hit enter. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the rectangle tool from here, create a selection to the horizon line, which is somewhere here. And then I'm going to hit crop tool, click here and make sure that delete crop pixels is not selected when you get, hit enter. And now you can save this as a JPEG. I'm not going to save it because I saved it before this tutorial already, but this is now a JPEG that you could then use in Luminar and you're going to understand soon how it works. So I'm going to come a couple of steps back here, um, here. And then when you come to filter, if you have installed Luminar, you can click to Skylum software and open Luminar. And this is going to open, it's going to take a while and it's going to open the Luminar interface. And the plugin is exactly like the software, nothing else, but the fact that you're only able to edit these changes so you can go to the library you can categorize your files here in the plugin so this is just the editing plugin which works exactly like you would be editing it in the standalone program so when we see the interface here it should be quite easy to understand if you're coming from a program like lightroom so we have all of our normal tools here like exposure highlights shadows and all of these usually have an advanced settings menu where you can then find further on settings but you are going to notice that there's also a lot of stuff that you never heard of these are tools that work with artificial intelligence so they're really really cool and we're not going to go that deeply into them in this lesson now but if you are interested to see more luminar tutorials comment down below and i will make sure to do that and in luminar we have four different menus we have essentials creative portrait and pro in this one, we're now only going to focus on the creative here. So when I click here, you're going to see all these different settings. You can create sun rays, you can create objects on the skies, you can replace the sky. And I'm going to explain all of this now. So when you click here on the artificial intelligence sky replacement and you hit sky selection, you have all of the skies that Luminar have here already set for you. We're not going to use those. What you can do, you can hit load custom sky image and then locate the sky that you want to use. I've already done that for the image that I showed in Photoshop so I'm just gonna click here and what you're gonna notice this doing is that it replaces the sky and it's not perfect right from the get-go but only thing we have to do is slide a bit of these sliders and we're gonna get to a really nice result so I'm gonna open all of these settings click on advanced settings and I'm gonna run through all of this quickly so horizon blending here determines how much the horizon blends with the sky so I'm just gonna put this all the way up and you're gonna see that it creates a softer selection I usually keep this around halfway and then fine-tune it later if needed then there's horizon positioning with this you can select how high your horizon is but because i already in photoshop set this image to the horizon line i don't really have to do that we then have relight scene and this is really really cool this is the slider that we blend your foreground with the sky so you don't have to do anything else than slide a slider that's it it maybe makes it a bit dull from here and there. After all, it is artificial intelligence. So of course we're gonna refine it later if it does any mistakes. But we then have a sky global. And what this does, it just determines how much 
of the new sky is going to be visible. And I want it to be visible as much as possible. So I'm just going to slide this all the way. You then have a setting here called close caps. And this is especially useful in situations when you're, for example, replacing a sky when there's a lot of trees. So with close caps, you can then refine all of those annoying fringing and stuff that you have going on. So I usually experiment with this and see what it does. I usually like to have this a bit open, not too much, just to the point where it gets rid of the original clouds that we had here. We then have a sky local setting and this just determines the overlap between the original clouds and the new sky. So I usually just experiment with this. I usually bring it the halfway and it usually gives me pretty smooth results. And what I like about Luminar is, is that it tries to blend your new sky with the clouds that were originally there. So we are seeing a bit of that haze here and it's not 100% replaced with a clear sky. In most cases, you're gonna get a really, really clean result. But if not, you can always slide this to try to fine tune it. You then have an opportunity for sky defocusing. We don't really have to do that. Uh, we then can add a bit of atmospheric haze. So let's say there would be a mountain here that is really hazy. You could then add a bit of haze to the sky as well to blend that. We then have a sky temperature here. And what is cool about this is when I turn it more towards the left, it also blends my foreground with the colors that it does for the sky. I usually bring this a bit to the left side with uh, night images, but that's it. You can then adjust the exposure of your sky. I usually don't touch this because I want to adjust it later on in Photoshop. And in Luminar's most recent update, they came up with this thing called artificial intelligence augmented sky. And what you can do here, you can add objects. And I think this is really interesting because you can select stuff like birds, clouds, eagles, fireworks, giraffes, such interesting objects. And you can also load custom images here so you can place whatever you want. One thing that is really cool here is for example, the Aurora. We're not gonna use this now because we have Aurora here already, but you could then hit here, place object, resize this however you want. And it looks really, really cool. You can just determine where you wanna boot it. But as I said, we're not gonna need that now. And you could then do all of these different adjustments here. For example, the real light slider here really nice nicely blends the northern lights in there but let's not use this that much now just remember it is there it's really powerful really interesting and I really like that they added that feature there and one cool thing about Luminar as well is that they have layers so I can click here on the layers panel I can add a new layer and I can add an adjustment layer and I can just then come back to for example the essentials let's do a bit of uh, exposure from here a bit of contrast a bit of highlights I just want to add a bit of that. And if I don't want the effect now to be available everywhere, I can come back to layers and I can hit edit mask and use radial mask. And then I will just drop a radial mask here, bring it here, hit invert. And now we have the effect of the adjustment layer here. And what makes this really, really good is that you can also decrease the opacity of this. So I can then just determine how much of that effect do I want to have there. So you can edit it with radial filters, graduated filters and brushes like you can do in Lightroom, but it's in layers, which is incredible. And right now, if I would be then happy with my result, I hit apply and we just get back to Photoshop. So this is extremely intuitive. You just change the sky really quickly and then you jump back into Photoshop. If you have any mistakes from the sky replacement, you can clone stamp those out. You can do any adjustment that you want. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to increase a bit of the contrast and do some of my own touches for it. So right now here in Photoshop, I would then add a bit of contrast to this, add a bit of brightness to this. Let's add a curve. I can uh, darken this a lot to add more of that night effect. I could then come to the blue section, maybe add a bit of blue here from the shadows. And what I also like doing here is adding a layer and set my layer to overlay. And with a normal soft brush here and my flow set to around four, five percent, I like to brush a bit of light coming out from the Northern Lights. And this really then blends this even further. So I like to add a bit of this light here if I turn this on and off, you can see that that adds a pretty nice effect. I'm going to take the opacity down a bit from it. And I also like to add a bit of fog. That will help us to blend the horizon even better. So I'm going to add a new layer. I have this fog brush here that I use. And with this fog brush, I can just sample a color by holding Alt. And then with the really small flow, I can keep brushing here. So I will brush, I will sample another color from here, brush, and I will keep brushing to the point where I think it looks good. I think that's maybe a bit too much. So then with the opacity, we can come down. 
But that's basically how easy it is to replace the sky with Luminar. I think it's incredible how far we come in technology and I can already see how helpful Luminar can be for all types of photography. So imagine if you're a wedding photographer and you're shooting in a weather that is rainy and cloudy, you could then easily, quickly replace the sky from the images that you would want to have a bit more of a nice weather in them. And I really like how accurate the blending as well is. It doesn't really replace Photoshop for me, but sometimes occasionally I might replace the sky with Luminar to get started with my project. All right, so we're not gonna do more than that in this tutorial. If you wanna see more Luminar videos, please just let me know in the comments and I will make sure to do them. And as I said, Luminar did sponsor this video, so there are affiliate links down below if you wanna purchase Luminar now yourself after seeing this video. I've also added a code, Julius10, so you can get 10 bucks off from your purchase. And what I think is really cool that Skylum is doing with Luminar is that you only pay once. You don't sign up to any monthly payments, it's a fixed price and then you have the software and I think that is really cool. But that's everything now. You can find me on Instagram at Visuals of Julius and I see you in the next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.